In this video, I'm going to show you some examples of why stock photos, photo shoots, and kind of the way that traditional media works is going to change forever because of generative AI capabilities. Things like what I'm showing you here, which is Leonardo AI. This uses stable diffusion to generate images. And here's some examples of a Ford F-150 that I generated using some simple prompts that I generated through ChatGPT. Just built the prompt for me. I just kind of explained what I wanted. And then it made me these beautiful, uh, realistic kind of, you know, photorealistic settings of like, you know, this is probably one of the best examples of a Ford truck on a farm. You know, we don't have, uh, we were missing a couple of details. We don't have a driver. The Ford logos are kind of, you know, they're, they're not there, but that's okay. Like everything that is missing is very minor and can be photoshopped or, you know, edited built in, you know, or, or basically this could be used for, uh, you know, a storyboarding or sort of concept design and we wouldn't have to go and actually do those, those photo shoots. We wouldn't have to actually go out, get a truck, go to a farm, have it be the right time of year, all those things. You could simply prompt it. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you some examples of how you can very quickly build out some really ultra realistic kind of stock photo type presentations with Leonardo AI and ChatGPT. So just to show you real quick, I'll show you another uh, example. So this is uh, an example of like a modern minimalist sort of gaming setup that I have. And this isn't perfect, but just to show you, there's a lot of capabilities here with the ability to generate highly realistic scenes, create things you know, from reality in a kind of photorealistic way with something like this. Now, I did a bunch of different variations on this, a bunch of different prompts, and we can kind of dive into that. And but I'm going to go over to ChatGPT, and I'm going to show you. We're going to build some prompts real fast, and then we're going to try them out. So here's what we're going to use in ChatGPT. You can get a link to this below. This is going to help us build our prompts for Leonardo AI. And what we're going to do is we're going to generate a uh, kind of like stock photos for a sort of like sportswear advertisement. So some of the examples that I have, they're just like people running that are athletic, that are wearing you know sportswear um i don't know exactly how else to put it but what we're going to do is we're going to ask this thing to help generate some images that kind of look like this so what i'm going to do is go over to chat gpt i'm going to say help me generate 10 prompts for a women's sportswear advertisement so i want a couple different poses but i want there to be a woman running and a woman lifting weights and i want it to be ultra realistic and then sometimes i want the background to be dark colors like let's try blue and red to start and uh for some of the other prompts can you make it a photorealistic setting of like running next to a river So we'll throw those in there, and as you can tell, I, I didn't really focus too much on the prompt. I really just kind of spoke to the AI. It is going to go through, and it's going to generate you know, a couple different prompts that we can try out. So we'll take this first one. This says, ultra-realistic uh, woman running, blue background. Generate a ultra-realistic image of a fit woman in modern sportswear, running energetically. She should exhibit a strong, determined expression. Use a deep blue minimalist background to emphasize your form and motion. Okay, cool. So we will take that. We'll go over to Leonardo AI and we'll see what we get. Now when I'm here, I'm going to go to image generation, pop over. This is my last prompt. I'll paste the new one in there. We'll go ahead and make sure photo reel is turned on. That's what we're going to want to want to see. Maybe what we'll do is we'll say, um, for this subsetting, we'll maybe say like fashion or cinematic. We'll kind of try a couple different ones, but I'm going to go ahead and say um, fashion, cinematic. We could also change the sizes. I'll try a different, couple different uh, options here. Maybe go ahead and see what that gets us. Cool. And then I am also going to take this one of uh, yoga. It says, hey, there's a woman practicing yoga at dusk. The sky should be a blend of deep blues and reds, creating a tank tranquil yet dynamic backdrop. So we'll see what that gets us as well. Okay, so I'm just going to walk through a couple of the examples we got back on the first prompt. So here is one right here that we got. 
Um, the background is kind of crazy. I think this is some sort of tennis net, but the subject herself is very like clearly defined. You can see we're getting um, kind of everything we wanted out of the posture and everything like that. Now this one's pretty cool. We have some wind. We have her running. Honestly, really good. We got this one. We got a blue sky. We have running. We have a clear subject. I think this one is a prime candidate to keep. Uh, and then this one, we even add a little bit of a uh, realistic uh, touch here because like, she has braces, I think. So that kind of adds something to the character that kind of makes her more human. Her pose is a little bit funky, a little bit too actioned. So let's go and see some other ones right here. So I've got um, this one. Interesting thing about this is this does include like candidly a Nike logo, which I think that's just based off of the images that it's trained on. You know, obviously it'd be ideal if it kind of, um, you know, worked that out, if it kind of blurred that, but you know, hey, that's okay. Um, this one's pretty good as well too, right? Same with this one. So, I mean, these are, are really high quality even without uh, any upscaling. Sometimes it's helpful to note that you will sometimes see these not safe for work content detected. Almost in no cases uh, is that true. So just sometimes for whatever reason, it will put that on. I had some come up on like images of trucks that I had earlier. So if you ever see that, don't worry about that. Um, this one's good. All these are turned out really good. So yeah, definitely something that you could you could use um, as a foundation for you know a storyboard. And what you can do is is with this um, this baseline right here, you could get this prompt right, and then take that into a uh, into a space where you're actually understanding. You, you take that prompt and then actually format it to say like, hey, this character, but she's doing something else. She's playing tennis. She's uh, literally doing anything else, right? Like any sort of different pose or any sort of different um, activity. Okay, let's go look at the, uh, the yoga one. So for yoga, so yeah, we have uh, yoga, we have something weird going on with the feet, so that's not ideal. Um, couple different, you know, I have to have somebody who's an expert in yoga tell me about the uh, body posture right here. But the only thing I would say is of these other ones is we had some warping with the hands and feet. We might be able to upscale and get rid of that. Um, but ultimately, something like this is maybe one of the better um, better versions. And one of the features that's really powerful is you can do image to image. So you can take an image like I took this one and then I said, hey, let me take this, this woman in this kind of pose and setting and then let me change the prompt to say, playing tennis and then you'll see if I go to the generations here you'll see that now I have the same character basically but on a tennis court and really in kind of the same like sort of pose same kind of body style same look and everything so we really have like a consistent character she's just sort of doing something very she's in a different setting right so like I could even say um, I could go to this image generation here so I can play tennis uh, or I could say modern sports we're playing volleyball on a beach in Hawaii right so actually see what that what that does so we should actually get um, same girl same style and we should get uh, her playing volleyball on a beach in Hawaii and here's the outputs here. Now, because we had some context in here about deep blues, we got kind of like, you know, it's a it's a beach, but maybe it's like a stormy day. I think that the volleyball net was probably the best thing that I put in there with kind of the clouds behind it. Um, but see, I said to use a deep blue minimalist background to emphasize her form and motion. So if I actually take that out, it actually be interesting to see what we would get if we take away the deep blue, see how that affects the prompt and ultimately the output of the image we generate. Okay, so we did get a little bit of enhancement, removing that from the prompt, right? So you see we have this background that kind of has this yellow and green mixed in with a blue, but that foundational image that we use for the image to image generation deeply influenced things here. So we do have uh, some crazy volleyball nets going on in the background, but you can see we do have um, the same type of character, 
overall same type of theme, right? We're getting some logos in there, but ultimately there's a lot of things that we could change, fix, uh, and kind of bolster up if we wanted to. One other cool thing that we could do is we could do uh, a motion video. So I could even show you, let's take this one. So we'll just take this one for example. We could even say right here, generate motion video. And we could say, hey, for motion strength, uh, we can we can crank that up however we want. Uh, and then we can generate uh, and once that generates, it'll be pretty cool. It's it's really not that much going on with it. It's not full-fledged video. It's not like Sora or anything awesome like that. But it is just like a motion video, so it's kind of like a GIF. You could use it for just a little bit more movement in a visual if you needed that or if you wanted to kind of build a foundation for... Um, I don't know, just any sort of uh, video output, but really, really, it's at this point in time, it's like really shorter than a GIF type motion. It's it's really very limited uh, visual, but just kind of a cool thing that you can do. And so, definitely not ideal. Uh, this is the output right here. This is something that kind of reminds me of the first videos of Will Smith eating spaghetti. So yeah, definitely not. Uh, as top tier as like Sora is going to be or anything like that. Uh, if we had tuned down the motion, uh, maybe this would have been a little bit better. I think because it was an athlete, uh, that changed a lot of things. I've had some motion of some motion generations of, of better, um, better content. I'll try to go down here and find one real quick. The I had a truck and the truck did just fine for the motion. Um, it really wasn't that exciting. Here you go. Let's show you this. So here was a motion of the truck, and it was just like a zoom in of the truck. I think because of the uh, because it was a picture of an athlete, and it was kind of picking up on that, and it was trying to make her run. That that didn't go well because that was too complex of a movement. Um, but overall, I hope that this is really helpful for you guys to figure out how to use Leonardo, how to prompt. Um, stuff like this. If it was, go ahead and uh, give me a like. Appreciate that. And I'll see you in the next video.